underdog is crushing the top dog. It's just amazing what these guys can pull off. He's going for Avro. Please run for Red Tank. Oh, and she takes him out. What a game. What a game. My God. They're attacking. They're every single vehicle of dislike is moving up. They're assaulting them. Welcome back to Thunder League. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second semi-finals of Thunder League. Yesterday we saw Arcade play off against Dislike, uh, they got defeated, and we saw Verve uh, trumble over my uh, my favorite squadron so far in the uh, competition, Think, which are now out of the competition, coming in at fourth place. And today we have nothing else but Arcade versus Verve, and it's one of these two teams that's going to be competing against Dislike tomorrow in the grand finals. With me tonight is the one and only German, sexy German, Mike Goes Boom. Ah, stop it, you make me blush. <laughs> Anyways, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fun League Playoffs Season 1, uh, Semi-Finals Number 2. Now, this is going to be an epic one. This is going to be an epic one. Arcade versus Verf. Ooh. And we have a change today. Instead of being uh, the usual uh, best out of 5, it's going to be a best out of 7. So we are going to see at least four matches for your enjoyment. Now, it seems like the first match is going to be... This looks indeed like Eastern Europe. Yes, indeed. Orange trees, lots of water, lots of houses. Now, before we go into the map and uh, analyze these games... Orange... Jeez, what, what happened yesterday, man? I, I, I was sad. I was sad for Fink Squadron, man. I, rip, ripping pepperonis. I was I was disappointed. I was you know the the problem was this. It was again the, the same story that repeated. Um, you know in the Thunder League finals, uh, Thunder Cup finals, where Verve was uh, was was a champion. The problem was, and what we've seen now develop among some of these teams. I think GOF was the first to start this. Was selecting one map, which is their favorite, the one they perform best on, and picking it twice. That guarantees you at least two victories. And what happened was, Think went with Poland, which I was surprised by. It, it, I felt like they were going to go with jungle. Poland was something that they've replaced, they haven't played that well on. And I think that, that kind of sealed their deal because Verve won there, it was a 2-2-1 and then they just finished off the deal on Nash River where the thing just could not compete because it's such a such a weird map where really Verve is the only one that does good. And especially on Nash River, we saw them win twice there and I, I got to tell you, they, they played it very well because they spawned twice on the same side, so that's the thing. The spawns alternate between games, so if you um, play the map once, then skip a game on another map, and then go back to the same map, you uh, get to the same site you spawned on the first time. And Verve had the strong spawn there. They had that, uh, that ridge that was uh, a bit more open, uh, over overlooking the A flag, and they just could park the Tiger Evo there and just completely stop Fink Spartan from taking the, the A flag. It was heartbreaking to watch. It was really heartbreaking to watch. I was expecting Fink to um, to at least pu uh, pull out two games out of that one, but sadly they lost three to one. Now, I mean, nonetheless, I mean, look, fourth place in Thunder League, not a bad result at all. And uh, you know, it, it's not it's not a luck competition. It's it's who's the best. And uh, we've proven Verve's proven the second time now that they are a formidable squadron. And I think that in season two things are going to come back, you know, stronger as ever. 
Indeed now, but they still have to uh, face off against uh, at least two more teams. Now, the match today is between uh, Verve and Arcade. Arcade yesterday got stomped by Dislike in a 3-1 defeat. I was... Honestly, I was kind of um, kind of nervous that uh, Dislike would be maybe not doing too well against Arcade, but they completely proved me wrong. They completely played to expectations and just stomped Arcade. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, we have some names scrolling by. Now, to those of you who have been with us for the past couple of weeks, you already know what this means. It is giveaway time! Santa Zerba is coming back to town. Now, what do you have to do to um, to participate in these giveaways, you might ask? Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is go to warfunder.pro, go to the Streams tab and log in with your in-game account. You can pause the stream, you can go back to Twitch, you can go back to studying, you can go back to, to wrecking noobs in your IS3, whatever. Just stay logged in and you can win some amazing prizes. Now, Orange, what is going on on the ground there? Uh, you were just speaking about teams that do well against Arcade. Uh, Arcade is now out of, of respawns. Actually, just Nosok is the one that can actually now respawn. Verve only lost uh, two so far. Arcade is not off to a good start. You know what I find really interesting? Verve didn't even take any reserve players in this match. They only have the seven players. This is weird. If one of them disconnects, that means that Verve cannot, um, cannot replace them. Yeah, that might be a problem, unless they call one of us in <laughs> to, to replace <laughs> which I doubt would be a smart idea. <laughs> um, well, I could, I could technically, although I'm probably not the best player around, but um, yeah, you, a Fink Squad member uh, playing for Verve, that would, that would be high treason. <laughs> I don't know, man. Inside sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't wouldn't help you out much anymore. The team is yeah, it wouldn't. After all out. But hey, at least you could help maybe um, Arcade win, which wouldn't really make too much of a sense either. But hey, whatever. Anyways, let's see on the ground. Uh, Verve going with a very strong player. They have both the A and the C flag, which gives them a major advantage now. Interestingly, usually when we see this map, we always talk about how important it is to al to also hold the other side of the river. Interestingly, there's no one. Neither yeah, it's, it's, Verve, it's nor empty. Arcade. It's cool. Well, we have we have a lucky shot going a bit bit wide here with the T44, but it's not. I wouldn't really call it flanking. He's still on his side of the map, so not putting much pressure onto Arcade. All he could do is flank around uh, Bartot, but the thing is, Colus Rordos and the Tigerese on the other side of the map completely holding him down. And that's the thing about the Tigerese. The Tigerese is not exactly the best tank for close quarter engagements, because it is uh, such a slow handling tank, but at long range, you definitely do not want to be exchanging a fire with a long 88mm cannon. I mean, look at Arcade now. There's, like, there's Futile, Ilya, Dark, Jed, and Moldcat all in the same line. They just can't move forward. Bartos and Destroy. Two players alone are holding back. Four players. Oh, I, c I could imagine one single SM79B here doing massive, massive damage. It's a, that's a a perfect line of bombing drop. Now, oh, look at Futile here. Futile being very aggressive in the Tigre. Uh, getting some shots at Barto takes him oh. out. Yes, indeed. That's the opening for Arcade. They can now move forward. But they'll have to face off against uh, Moonlight. Futile, very interesting here, um, using his tank to shield Ilya McLaren into, in the T25. Heavy tank defending the medium tank. That's how it's done. Yep, very good teamwork from Arcade here. They, they might just bring this one back. Destroys in tr trouble. He's being double teamed here from behind as well. They have to watch out for the response though. The Arcade cannot afford to lose any more tanks. They are down one player as well as Verve is. But at the same time, uh, most of the players have already lost their respawn as well. Which means if either of these players die, they get kicked out. They don't have any respawns left. They have to be careful. Oh, William McLaren takes out to destroy Arcade is now in the capture zone and is decapping the C flag, which means the ticket bleed has stopped. Now, we are six minutes six minutes and thirty seconds into the game, which means if Arcade can hold this flag until the end of the game, they might yet win by points. But we all know the worth gaming, they're not going to make that one easy. Arcade cannot afford to lose any more tanks. But I also don't think Arcade is going to go and try to win by points. It's not their way of playing. They go for complete destruction or, well, don't win at all. They usually do, but here's the thing you have to remember. This is, uh, this is playoffs. You can't really allow any, any slippage. This, this one match that they, might lose to, um, that they might lose now can bite them back uh, in, the, in the future matches, but not, just not having enough points. And Arcade knows that. They are not, they are not dumb. They, they know that if they have to play defensive, they will, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. There's no point in trying to advance and uh, destroy the enemy when the enemy has the, the advantage on you. Thing Although is, they should have they should have used that yesterday against this line. They were just 
all over the place. I mean, this like was... They were feeding them their own tactic kind of backwards. And I, I, I can't go by without mentioning Johnny K when he went away and, uh, alone against two Tigerese <laughs> and the T-44 and survived. Unbelievable. I saw that. I saw that. I was actually watching your stream yesterday uh, when you when you and Sean were commentating. Uh, I was hanging out in the chat and holy crap, the, the hype about Johnny K was real. <laughs> we were losing it. We couldn't believe what was happening. You know, we were like, oh yeah, Johnny's dead. And then somehow he, he, he makes a comeback. And he was like, damn, what? One crew member and the tank was slightly yellowish. He took no damage from them. That's the thing, if you, if you know how to angle a turret, it's, it's all very good. If it was in a T-44 or in a T-44, I can't remember quite, quite right now. It was a T-44. T-44, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That T-34 wouldn't have held that very well with that frontal plate. Yeah, the whole armor of the, T of the T-34 is not that good. But T-44 is quite bouncy, and as long as you can keep um, the frontal uh, turret cheeks um, angled, you're almost impenetrable as well. Although the lower glasses can be aimed for, but again, you know, in, in a quick split second, it's going to be very hard to hit. Also, he was in a very close range. If uh, the enemy tank would have would want to to get a lower glacis, they would have to do lower lower the gun, which would have increased the, the angle there. Yeah. But anyways, let's see. Nothing much has changed yet. Our kids still holding the C flag very strong. They haven't died anymore. They still are only one player uh, down. Same as Worth Gaming. Worth Gaming only has two uh, respawns over Arcade. So Lucky Shot and Sniper still haven't died just yet. But Colossal Rose was taken out and uh, both teams actually have Osmonds, which is interesting because neither of the teams can really spawn in any aircraft right now. Especially Arcade. Arcade cannot spawn in any aircraft. I think the problem right now is that Verve has no one on the other side of the river. Meanwhile, Nosok is there, kind of spotting around. The Muga is now putting some shots into him, but he's speaking. Yo, know, they need a flank here. If they want to dislodge Arcade from C point, they need to flank around. Oh, oh, it's falling apart. It's falling apart in the space of 20 seconds. Both Futile and Ila McLaren have died. The C flag is now open for, TV, for TVG to take back, and Arcade are now down to only four players. Not doing good, man. Not, not doing good. But oh, look! Our kids and Nosex Metane to the other side of the river. That might be what they need. That might be the defense they need. But at the same time, can four players pull it off against six players from TVG? We'll have to see. I mean, it, it, if they can hold Charlie, somebody needs to push in there. What, what Verve is going to probably do is going to imitate GOF. You know, go behind the house and make sure they're, they're invulnerable. And it's going to be down to Nosok to, uh, to make sure that Charlie's clean. Oh, no six minutes takes a shot, such shot such at Bartod. Bartod is on fire, but not out. And he takes out Bartod. Bartod is now done as well. And look at this, Arcade actually managed to pull back the scores. Yeah. It is four versus four now. Very I mean, good, very good. Verve still has two respawns more, but um, if they can hold Charlie, they might as well just have this. Oh, Red, red Rain point the Austin. Look at the Austin. Perfect side shots at the T44. Can he kill him, though? Can he kill them? Takes some more shots, immobilizes tracks, Moldcat comes in front, takes a shot. Engine... F Actually, no. Yes, engine fire, engine fire, lucky shots, engine is on fire. This guy is pretty much doomed. But Charlie's now being decapped, Moonlight and Sniper have pushed in. Lucky shot now being tacked in by Moldcat and Dragon. Can they, they're they going to finish him off in time, but they need to move into Charlie as soon as possible. Not oh, so look at this, Ostwind versus Ostwind. Ostwind versus Ostwind. Oh, Red Dragon, what doesn't see the Mugen, the Ostwind? Taking fire, taking exchange shots. No, oh, the Mugen is down. out. <laughs> you know what the problem was? He, he took his uh, right track off and it, it it put him sideways. It was an easy <laughs> shot then. Unbelievable. Oh, that was amazing. Look at this, look at this also, awesome man. Look at Red Dragon War. This guy, this guy here is one of the best uh, pilots we have in Van Rijk. This guy alone can take out an entire enemy air force, but... It seems like he can play the Osman also very well. Normally, when we t when we think about AA, we think about uh, being more um, more defense, defensive, not yeah, too much. This guy doesn't care. He rushes straight into there and it kills enemy tanks. Look at this. Oh, Moldcat exchanging shots with Sniper. <laughs> Here comes Red Dragon. <laughs> Sniper is in trouble, and Sniper got taken out by Nosex Matana. What a dirty kill steal! What a dirty, dirty kill steal! <laughs> I, I think this like might be over for Verve now. Oh, look at this now. Red Dragon versus uh, Lucky Shot in the T-34. The Oswin can actually take out the T-34 pretty easily, as long as he gets those uh, those shots off into the lower into the lower hole. I mean, and Verve has to really, really, really work right now because it's two players versus versus four. Orange? Not even kidding. I think Arcade might pull this off. Look at the scores. Verve only has two yep. players left. Yeah, that's the problem. 
What happened was they were too defensive. You know, Arcade kind of just went slowly but surely rolling in with those Tiger E's capturing Charlie. And I think Nosok was the, the one thing that won them over. He killed three players alone. That's, uh, I tell you, that's the power about having uh, someone on the other side of the river. Hell, hell Nosok has an ace match here. He killed five players. Ace in the game. Ace yeah. in a game. Nosok he, he carried. He off this match. <laughs> I mean, Verve, Verve went flanking with... Uh, with lucky, lucky shot, but he went, you know, not over the river, but over into the forest. Which might have worked, but he was back towards A point. That wasn't going to win them the match. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, welcome to Thunder League Season 1 Playoffs. This is the second half finale between Verve and Arcase. One of these teams is going to face off tomorrow against this like in the grand finale for the first place and for the first place and Thunder League and the massive, massive prize pool of, of almost twenty thousand dollars. And holy crap! I gotta tell you, man, Arcade started out weak on this map, but completely turned it around. It might just be as long as they didn't do anything stupid. Now they might very well win this game. Although. Sniper did just eliminate Moldcat, that leaves Dark Jade and Red Dragon War alone against two T-34s. Nosok is putting some shots into Sniper, his transmission is out, he needs to repair. There's only one minute left in the game. If Verve Gaming wants to, wants to win this match, they have to take out the entire team of Arcade in one minute. Can they do it though? Oh, Red Dragon Ground, the Oswin taking some, sh some shots at Lucky Shot. Lucky Shot seems to be in trouble. That's a track down. Verve Gaming has to move. They have to advance now. They have to take out these guys. But they are both in trouble here. They are both in T-34 85s. Not exactly. <laughs> I mean, armor you know what Red Dragon is doing? He's just pushing forward, you know, putting one or two shots into their tracks and just making sure they're repairing that they can't move into Charlie. And slowly but surely, they... Uh, yep. Red Dragon just killed Lucky Shot. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's now going for Sniper as well. This Osman is... Uh, yeah, okay, he's out now. But Sniper now alone against uh, against the Tiger E and the T-34. And the points are just about to run out. Ladies and gentlemen, it it's seems over. like Arcade is taking this first game against Verve. Oh my. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. Like, they started out weak. Uh, he's a very weak, Arcade. yeah. They actually surprise us now, because normally Arcade is a team that uh, relies on one single tactic. Since... Um, their best, I think it was their best uh, tankers that um, exited the team and, and went on to form Dislike. Uh, they kind of didn't have the, the strong presence in tank games anymore. They, they had to rely heavily on their Air Force, taking out um, the enemy team at the start of the match and go for elimination. Not this time. I mean, it, it, it worked out perfectly fine for Arcade. They, they, didn't, uh, they didn't manage to get the, the elimination they wanted to at the start of the match, but they still managed to come back and eliminate Verf with tanks. Something that we don't see too much, especially since Verve is a very strong tanker team as well. That was yeah, I think they've put some practice into their tankers, and they have to. You know, this is this is primarily based around tanks because planes, you know, air security is great. Using bombers as they do with the SM-79 is also great, but you can't cap. That's the issue. That is the issue indeed, and um, you may think that hmm, maybe if I take a full, ta a full team of aircraft out, I might w eliminate the entire enemy team. Uh, well, Dislike tried and it did not work out, so if Dislike can pull it off, I doubt you can pull it off. <laughs> it was fun though, it was extremely it was, fun was. and unexpected. This the thing, I, I, I'm telling you, Dislike not only is a very strong team, they're also a very entertaining team to watch because you can never predict what they do. They're completely unpredictable. Yeah, if they won me personally over yesterday with, <laughs> hell, with Johnny K, that guy, phenomenal. If I see him in a match, uh, I'll, be, I'll be going the wrong direction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that uh, this is the, well, second to last match of Thunder League. We only are streaming today and tomorrow, one match each. So don't miss anything out. If you still haven't won anything in the giveaways, just stay tuned. You might yet get lucky. All you have to do is go to warfunder.pro, go to the streams tab and log in with your in-game account, of course. You have to keep the tab open. You can pause the stream if you want to. It doesn't matter. From time to, from time, to time, Mr. Zerba Claus is going to push that uh, big red giveaway button and uh, you'll see some names scrolling on the button of the screen. And hey, if your name happens to appear um, among those lists, you might have won something. Just log into the game, see if a um, trophy opens for you and tell us what you won. Unless you won an RBT-5, because if you won an RBT-5, 
I'm going to be very angry, especially if Dislike loses tomorrow, because I wanted RBT5, and Dislike is my only chance. <laughs> Again, TVG going with a solid choice. They're they're an Ash River, and they've got, you know, they've the got their spawn. Uh, they've they got the their spawn. spawn. TVG spawning on the eastern side, which was the side that defeated Fink Squadron yesterday. I don't think that Arcade is going to, to win this one by by points, no. They will have to try and eliminate TVG, or at least hold them off from uh, from getting to defensive position. Especially that uh, the Tigre that usually goes uh, to the ledge over watching the A-Flag. They have to take him down if they want to have any chance of taking that A-Flag. They need to make sure they don't get a triple camp going, but that, that's what Verve does. They go for the triple camp insanely quickly in the game and by the time that you finally start killing the enemy players and try to v-cap for uh, charlie for example it, it's over oh sniper takes some, some fire there from red dragon war but still seems to be flying the vehicle in the meantime shot down dark jets are okay, now down to three aircraft ah red dragon missing his shots here sniper fosters over should look at this yeah very well planned and, and they can't waste time that's the thing Arcade doesn't have it. Oh, Red Dragon takes a heavy into his left uh, wing and he's out. That is bad for Arcade. Red Dragon War is without a doubt the best, play, the best uh, pilot that Arcade have. Losing that pilot is going to set him back quite heavily. As it stands, Arcade is already down three deaths. Uh, TBT has only lost their Mugen. Not looking good for a cat here, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, look at the bottom of the screen. We have another round of giveaways coming in now. I'm not going to repeat how you can win in the giveaways, but I'm going to tell you what you can win in the giveaways. Now, if you don't have a dog tag, you can win civil line boosters, research points, premier accounts, uh, golden eagles. You can win the M24 Chaffee and the P51A Mustang. Now, if you do have a dog tag, on top of all of that, you can also win the RBT5 and some team logo decals. And look at the game right now, triple cap. I think. You know, just from this alone, I think Verve's gonna win. It's going to be very hard for Arcade to come back from this. Yeah. As I was telling you, the Verve Gaming does not get killed on Ash River. I was... They don't. They just win by camping. It's it's a solid choice. It works out. I mean, why? Oh, oh is why out by futile, but see, there's a problem. That's too late. You know, they, they've killed a, a player that's in Charlie. That's you know, they have captured the, the zone. But you should have done that before he captured it. Because now it's going to take some time for Elias to start rolling in, then there's Destroy waiting for him. And there's just the time. Ooh. Time is slowly running out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Lucky shot just cross map snipes. No socks in my tail. That was beautiful. Yeah, this is not looking good for Arcade. It is. No sock is out of the match already. And this is one of the tactics. I mean, this is one of the tactics of Verve uses all the time, which is they target players who have died once and just get them out of the match as soon as possible. Ah, uh, Moldcat just crashed into ground there, not looking good either. Yeah, it is not looking good for Arcade. We might see a, a tie in this one, but that's the thing. You cannot let Verve take the upper hand on uh, on this map. That's going to be a problem because Verve is going to pick this map uh, at least once more, more, if not twice. Again. Oh, Ilya got killed by Kolos by uh, an actually strike, I'm not mistaken there. Now, Arcade sends some players back to the A-Flag, but is it enough? I don't think it is. Now, ever had he right at here, he is in a uh, M4A3 Jumbo, which has a very strong turret armor and a uh, very good gun brushing, which means he can use this uh, this ledge here to his advantage. But he's taking some heavy, heavy damage. His transmission is down, his commander is down, his gunner is down, his radio operator is down, which means he only has two crew left, one more shot, and he is down as well. He bounces some shots there, but no, I mean, that's a problem. Moonlight isn't Zygery on top of that mountain. You can't get rid of him. Sniper is now camping, protecting Lucky Shot. Lucky Shot is hiding on Alpha behind the, the B-17 wreck. Bartlett is keeping tabs on B, and now Colossus is coming back towards Charlie to the triple cap. We have five minutes into the game. The Worth Gaming already has bled half of the points of Arcade. Arcade is down one player, the Verve Gaming still have still have all of their players left. Now he's Arcade is in a very very tough spot here because they're not going to win by capping anymore, and the only chance they would have is to win by uh, by by elimination. But for that they would need aircraft, and the only aircraft they, they have in the air right now is uh, Futile and before 9 6 and it's only one aircraft with rocket bots. Given it can take out one tank, but how many times will he have to to go back to the airfield to rearm to take out uh, to take out the tank? If yeah, and unlike, unlike in Berlin, the, the airfield uh, on Ash River is quite far away. It is, it's like way over the mountains. 
Now, Red Dragon just spawned in in the J87 D5 Stuka, which is an interesting choice, an interesting aircraft, but uh, there's the Mugen in the Oswind waiting. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That is a problem indeed. The J87 D5 is rather slow and rather big, which means it's going to be no problem for this Oswind here to take him down. At the same time, though, it is a dive bomber, which means as long as he can stay high outside of the, um, of the detection range from the Mugen and then come in in the dive, on top of the tank, he might still take out something, but he's not going to survive after that. He gets one yeah, shot. He's, he's going to rely on Futal to take out the Oswin before he can engage. But the problem is that Arcade has a completely different issue here. It's the clock. The tickets are running out. They are. Now, Ilya McLaren uh, had the right idea. He went over to see, which is not going to stop the ticket bleed, but at least if they can take out one more flag, they can at least stop it now. Which means um, if they can take B, they might still have some sort of fighting chance, but at the same time, not too much. Now, interestingly, both Arcade and TVG are now down one player each, which means numbers are even. Nope, never mind. Arcade just lost another player and now down two players. We are seeing a five versus six engagement here. Oh, Futsal got shot down by the Mugen. That means Red Dragon is going to have a hard time approaching. That Indeed, might he's already getting shot at. Right. He's already getting shot at. Trying to bet far from the Mugen, but is it enough, though? Is it enough? I He's doing fine this. though. He's doing if you can kill Sniper and Lucky Shot, I mean... Oh, drops what, what bombs on Rocky do? Shot. Is it enough though? Lucky Shot gets taken out. And... Bartok gets as well. Double kill by Red Dragon Bar, but loses his right wing in the progress. Now I gotta say, 2 for 1, that might have been worth it. But the points are out. Arcade loses this match. I mean, so far, we haven't seen a single team adapt to, to the Verve's way they play on Ashro, and I think it came as a bit of a surprise. Where is Arcade's tactics, though? You know, where is that whole, let's roll out an aircraft, get the bombers out, and, and, and kill them that way? Because perhaps it could work. But again, the only way that we've so far seen a tactic, a good tactic to be defeated, is by using the same tactic. Arcade needs to go for the triple cap early in the game, hold it, and hope for the best. Because they had the right idea about taking out many aircraft. It's at the start, but for some reason the Air Force just fell apart. They had the numbers advantage and they had Red Dragon War and somehow they still managed to, to lose the SA Pro to, to the Verve gaming there. They lost way too many aircraft in the process and it could have worked out. It could have actually worked out because the thing about TVG, they are very strong on Ash River, but they depend on getting their tanks into the right position at the start of the match. You, you gotta, you gotta see, after five minutes, you can't beat our, uh, TVG anymore. Once they get into those positions, they are pretty much un- Killable. But if you can get him early on, if you can uh, hold off the tiger from getting to the ledge, if you can hold off the the, the medium tanks of getting the A cap, you can actually beat Verf on this map. You just have to get um, you just have to get those kills in very early into the game, which is, it which is the playstyle of arcade. But they have to get they have to, to at least win the air battle in order to do that. I mean, maybe the laziest way of dealing with it would be to go and roll all the tanks to one cap circle. Like, because the problem is Verve with a triple cap drains the ticket so fast that by the time that Arcade, even if they did, slow is not coming back, the game is already over. You need at least one cap circle to be contending. And that's why the problem is with, with Ash River is that, on, for example, Eastern Europe, we just saw, um, both of the teams have one cap circle. They can spawn, you know, it's a, it's a spawn point, basically. You, you roll right into it. It's right next to you. On Ash River, though, all the points are in the middle of the map. You have to get there first. And whoever gets there first gets the win. Now the thing is, um, Fink did try that tactic yesterday, and it did not. It did not work out for them. If I if I remember quite right, Fink did um, pretty much send all of the tanks to to the A flag on uh, on Ash River, and it still did work out. TVG still managed to to take them out one by one. You have because, to find because the Verve is too strong on, on on A point because they have Moonlight and a Tigery on top of that ridge line. If they can get him killed by a BF one line, they can progress. Indeed. Now it seems like the next map is going to be Poland. Um, this could be interesting. I don't really see either Arcade or Verf playing well too strong. I'm like, of course they play very strong, but it's not exactly the the map they most um, win on. Especially Verf, they they lost yesterday against uh, Fink quite hard on Poland. Yeah, I mean Verf, they do well, but if it ain't if it ain't Ashra, they're not going to do it particularly excellent. But the way they play on, on Ash River is it's a guaranteed victory for them. So what Arcade needs to do, they need to pick the maps where they're strongest. 
Hmm, hmm, hmm. The thing is you have to, to keep in mind as well that uh, we are playing at least, uh, well, at least three more matches now. This is after all best out of seven, not best out of five anymore. Yeah, the first team to get four wins is going to win. I'm guessing that towards, towards the end, these guys are going to be very, very exhausted. I, I know we're going to be exhausted. I know we I are. I mean, we're doing nothing. <laughs> we're just sitting here talking into a microphone. That's all we're doing. What these guys have to do, they have to, you know, cooperate, scream over each other where one has to go, you know, call players out, command, uh, and play at the same time. That, they're going to be fatigued heavily. This thing you have to keep in mind that um, it's, not, it's not just only skills. You have to have endurance. You have to have uh, the mental capacity. You have to have morale. Uh, one thing that, that often loses um, teams' games is a broken morale. Yeah, that's sort of the mind games that uh, the, the players you especially dislike. They they like to play those mind games. They they like to break the morale of the enemy team and just steamroll during the rest of the match. That's why they seem so unkillable. You know what breaks the morale the most is when when a team loses on their favorite strongest map. So if if somehow Arcade can in fact dislodge TVG from Ash River and not just like a slight win, but completely destroy them. That could be their tickets to the finals. That is indeed true. Now, Arcade's um, classical tactic here. They aren't really changing the tactics. Three tanks rushing to the sea flag and four aircraft in the air. Now, it's all going to depend on Arcade being able to take out Lucky Shot and Loner, who are currently moving in on the B flag. If they cannot take them down, they might lose this match as well. As soon as they let uh, Verf Gaming take the, the B anti A cap, it's going to be very hard for RK to come back from this. Yep, and again on the ground, that same tactic, it, it looks like TBG is going for A and B and Lemming Train for Charlie. Oh, oh no, oh no, RK just lost the uh, Dark Jet, but Multic Multicat did take out Cold Rose as well. So it's still an even battle here. Yeah, but Multicat was taken down there, the fire was uh, was too heavy. So the that's two less aircraft for RK. Yeah, oh, the Mugen took a heavy shot to the left wing. Still flying, but not by much. He's going down. I'm trying to understand you, because I was expecting Dwarf Gaming to be a stronger um, ground forces tank, but they seem to have gotten some, some really good pilots now. I mean, hell, they are beating Arcade at aircraft. Yeah, they are. Futil's now the only one left on Arcade, and his engine just, uh, well, slowly dying out. And he's against an LA-7, an intact LA-7 that's now behind him. Not looking good. Especially at low altitudes, and since he has uh, rocket pods, yeah, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Now on the ground, we've got a double cap going for, for Verve. Strong. As expected. As expected. The aircraft battle took too long. Fetal now gliding towards the ground. So it seems like he's going for a lucky shot here and... Doesn't take him... Or does! He does! He did take him out. Kamikaze into the T-44. Last ditch effort. His engine was down. He managed to take out one tank. But was it the right one though? He didn't go for the Tiger. The Tiger would have probably been a better choice there. Yeah, but long range distances, the Tiger is going to be extremely important for uh, making sure nobody goes for Alpha or just defending Bravo in general. Now, interestingly, Arcade, even though they lost all of the aircraft, they aren't going for caps either. It seems like they are uh, forming a defensive line towards the enemy spawn here. As Cold Rod, the Mugen, and Lucky Shot just spawn in at the same time. Oh my god, these guys waited. These guys coordinated the spawn and are now pushing back the defensive line of Arcade. You know what's interesting about Arcade so far is that they really used to be a bit of an unpredictable team. And they, they just haven't changed the tactics since they've come into the playoffs. That might be the, their, their little bane. Because you need to start adapting. And for them, it's always the same amount of aircraft, same players, and the same vehicles, and no changes anywhere. The tactics are identical for all matches. That's the thing. Uh, the Arcade tactic is very strong against um, teams that don't know how to adapt to it. But... If you meet a team like Verve, like uh, like Fink, like um, like a dislike, you're not going to win with the same tactic over and over and over again. I mean, there's a problem in group stage in the early playoffs. Arcade had a bit of an easy rundown because most of the teams were, well, not very good at adapting to their tactics, and they're a very very good team. Now, I mean, we're down to the top three. Indeed. By the way, um, it seems like we have another round of giveaways coming in, ladies and gentlemen. If you just tuned in. Welcome to Thunder League, you are missing out. 
Uh, now, if you want to take part in these giveaways, all you have to do is go to warfunder.pro, go to the streams tab, and log in with your in game account. Shortly on the bottom of the screen, should scroll some names of the lucky winners. Maybe you can get an RBT5 just in case you bet on Fink. Ha! 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 Hilarious! Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> I'm calling it though, it's season 2, Fink is making it to the finals. I mean, they have to. I was expecting to, to get there. I mean, remember Thunder Cup. Remember Thunder Cup. The finals were Fink versus Verve Gaming. So they, Fink could definitely have what, uh, what, what it takes. They just didn't have a lucky run against uh, against Verve yesterday, which makes kind of sense because uh, Verve also was the team that beat Fink in the finals uh, in the Thunder Cup. You know what the problem was with Fink? Uh, it was that match with GOF. Uh, in the very beginning, I was surprised because they had two wins, going strong, and then GOF came back. Three wins in a row. And they eliminate Think. And for a split second, I I convinced myself that perhaps it was a tactical decision. Because if they won that match, they would have gone against Dislike. And Joev going against Dislike, well, you know, they lost. And then they were moved down uh, and then also got taken out. So I figured, could that have been, you know, a smart decision to evade Dislike at least up until the finals? If they managed to get there. And in, in this case, they of course did. And it wasn't. It was just an unfortunate defeat. It led to a, to a chain of events, and they got taken out by by Verve, Thunder Cup champions themselves. I gotta have a, I gotta give props to Verve Gaming here because I remember in the group stages, Verve started out actually quite weak. They were actually disappointing us with their performance. It, it yeah. didn't seem like Verve, but they, they definitely picked up the pace, and they are now showing why they are the, the champions of Thunder Cup. But are they gonna be enough to defeat this like if? They, they get there first because, you know, there's still Arcade standing here. Although right now, triple cap going for uh, for Verve and Arcade is pretty much nowhere to be seen. They're already down three players, um, while TVG's only lost three respawns. And mind you, this is Arcade picking the map. TVG is so strong, man. TVG is just way too strong. The thing, the really problem about Arcade is, yes, they are a very strong team, but they only have one tactic. If that tactic doesn't work out, they don't know how to come back, and TVG is relentlessly abusing that one flaw that Arcade has. Yeah. Look at this, look at look at this line, look at this line of TVG tanks, just like a Berlin Wall on wheels, moving forward, enclosing Arcade here. I mean, in the group stage, Arcade was like like the bully. They just went around, just just clubbing everything, and now Verve's here, and they're they're bringing the pain back. Look at the push though, all the tanks of TVG now, even though they have the camp circles are moving in, they're, they're using Arcade's elimination tactics, they're going for the, for the kills here. Nosok this. and Ilya the last players left. This is what I call coordination. All tanks moving up at the same time, Arcade yeah. has no chance whatsoever. Ilya McLaren now the last tank left alive in a poor T25. Uh, <laughs> Ilya, mate, I'm sorry, you can just as well give up, you're not going to win this one. There's yeah, no rest, rest chance. In peace. There's no chance to win, TV, to win against TBG now. The only chance for Arcade to win this match now is if, is, is if all the uh, the players of TBG suddenly had a pause. Oh, Ilya though takes out lucky shot, but destroy finishes him off in return. It was a mercy kill. It was a mercy yeah. kill. It was probably just bite, you know. Here I am, turn your turret, and uh, my team will finish you off. I gotta say though, at least respect to TPG for not uh, for not fooling around. I mean, if, if it was this like in that situation, they wouldn't have killed uh, the last player alive just like that. They would have played with him a little bit. We saw that yeah. um, in the group stages. This like versus Akai victory, that was brutal to watch. That oh, was God. brutal to watch. They bullied the last tank into a corner. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm seeing right now? I feel like I'm seeing a copy of of Think versus TVG. Just in this case, um, Arcade is not doing is doing even worse than uh, than Think Squadron. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, because you know Think was close. They had decent matches. They were they were quite balanced out. Right now, Arcade got wiped on their own, you know, picked map. And I think, I think Arcade is kind of scared of which map to choose because Verve. We know they're gonna pick Ash River again. It's hundred <laughs> percent guaranteed. If it was GOF back in the group stage, they would pick Eastern Europe. But Arcade, they. They choose Eastern Europe, and they barely win. You know, they choose Poland, and they lose. What, what are they going to do? Are they going to go with, with Ash River and try to you know, beat Verve in their own game? Are they going to go for, 
for Kuban that we rarely see. Are they going to roll out Berlin? I think Berlin might be their best chance. Berlin might be their best chance. Berlin is one of the strong, uh, strong maps of Arcade. But at the same time, Werf is also very good on Berlin. Because remember, uh, it seems they, Ar- have to be, they have to be good on Berlin. There's no, there's no really uh, discussion about that. Yeah. The last the, match. The fifth the match, match is going to be played, yeah. In this case, the seventh match, if we, if we Actually, get Actually, I'm not there. even sure. Is it going to be a fifth match? I mean, I'm guessing that um, they're only going to see the seventh match on Berlin, if we get that far. Because yeah. at the moment it's not looking very good for for Arcade here. I mean, it's already two to one. Nerf Gaming is choosing the map. We are going to Ash River, which means Arcade, you're going to have to pull out something fancy. Are you going to are we going to see a repetition of the second match of today? Not looking good. Not looking good whatsoever. But hey guys, in the chat, tell us what you think. Do you think Arcade can can pull this off and win against Verve Gaming? Do you think it's going to be Verve versus uh, Dislike tomorrow in the finals? And if you do so, who do you think is going to win the finals? Because remember, this is going to be epic. If Verve actually wins, wins this game, this is going to be very epic. These teams haven't faced off in the playoffs before. Yep, and if Arcade manages to come back, we're going to see a rematch of, of Dislike versus Arcade, and that should be interesting as well. Indeed, indeed. Although Dislike did beat Arcade quite easily, but still, still. Tomorrow, eight or either way, tomorrow is going to be epic, so do definitely stay tuned for that. And I think Arcade would, would like a bit of a rematch against Johnny K there. They would love it. <laughs> just not this time, not uh, not having so much more mercy. <laughs> yeah. But so, I mean, okay, this is something that Sean would probably ask me. But this time, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you: If you were the leader of Arcade right now, if you were if you were our MD, their captain, what would you what would your tactics be? Knowing that you're gonna go against Ash River, knowing that you're fighting against Verve, and knowing exactly which tactics they're going to apply. I would do it like the French, um, turn my tank around and run away <laughs> as fast as, as I can with a white flag hostess. Nope, 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 <laughs> you're not having it. <laughs> nope, 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 burn it with fire, burn it with fire. <laughs> now, in all honesty, it's all about the, the first couple of minutes in, of the game. If you let Verve get to the positions, they, you're not going to, to take them out. It's, it's like a fortress, it's like pillboxes. Those tanks turn into pillboxes and it's going to be impossible to crack them. But if, we, if within the first minutes you can get the SR priority and take those critical tanks out, you can win against Verve. As long as you, as, as long as you prevent them from getting to those positions, you can win. But it's, it, it just depends on the first minute of the game. I, I can bet with you right now. Orange, I'm going to bet with you right now. Like, if we ever get together, I'm going to pay you two beers. Right? Okay. If Arcade uh, doesn't manage to, to destroy the, the essential forces of Earth within the first three minutes, they're going to lose the match. I can okay, I'm going to raise the stakes. If Arcade doesn't win the next match, they're going to lose this, uh, this battle here. They're not going to progress to the finals. Well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> not too obvious. I mean, we are still going to have a... At least a fourth match, because remember, we are in, in a best of seven, not best of five anymore. So there's still a chance for them to somehow pull three games in a row out of their, um, of their, out of their sleeves. But it's going to be very, very, very unlikely. It's going to be a very difficult, yeah. So yeah, they took three minutes of a break, and I hope they came up with a, with a tactic. They're going to need it. They need something, something different. They are going to need something different. Now... Whilst the teams are taking this break, let me uh, grab this opportunity and inform you about how you can actually take part in the Thunder League. Yes, you heard that right. A couple of days ago, the guide announced some interesting news, namely the introduction of the Semi and the Beginners Thunder League. So, get your friends together, get your team together, play some squadron battles. If, and if you're good enough, uh, you're going to get invited into the uh, officially hosted tournaments, play through those, play through the playoffs, and who knows, maybe um, in the next uh, season of Fun League, we're going to see you compete against these teams. We'll just have to wait and see. So the teams are slowly spawning in again. Verve, if I'm not mistaken, will be on their uh, on their favorite side, which is the, uh, the spawn with a little outline ridge where the the Tiger E Moonlight is most likely going to be camping again. We're going to see Colossus drive towards C. Barta probably taking Bravo, and Lucky Shot will be camping on Alpha. Unless Verve would change the tactics, which I doubted. I doubt it. I mean, it's been such a strong tactic so far. It was a tactic that defeated Fink Squadron. It's going to be more than enough to defeat uh, Arcade. 
as long as Arcade doesn't manage to take them out in the first minutes of the game. As I told you, if Arcade can take out those critical tanks in the first three minutes, they can still win this. But they have to do that. If they fail to do so, they, can, they might as well just bail out. What about a defensive approach? I mean, Arcade is always being offensive, but what if they didn't take planes, or just take one, and they would take out like one or two Ostfins, depending on how many aircraft were in the air? Mm hmm. The thing is, Ostwinds, Arcade isn't really much of an Ostwind uh, team. I mean, Red Dragon War is a good Ostwind, Ostwind driver. He is, but he's an even better pilot. Yeah, that's a debate, though, yeah. What is going to be more, more effective? Because I think the problem of Arcade is that they, they take the aircraft out. They have the air superiority most of the time, but they don't have that time during which they can actually deploy their rockets. And we've seen this kind of problem progressively getting worse throughout the playoffs, is, is that the aircraft don't have that much of an effect. The, the, the first air battle in the first 30 seconds of the match is more or less just the initial elimination of, of players. Maybe then one or two tanks get taken out, but that's about it. Let's see what else we see. I mean, I'm not really understanding how Arcade isn't winning the air superiority. I mean, they are supposed to. They have more aircrafts and they have technically more skilled pilots. I don't know exactly what Verve doing, uh, is doing here, but they are just holding off the one strong point that Arcade has. Arcade without aircraft is almost nothing. They can't win without the aircraft. Yeah, they're denying them their abilities. Oh, is this... Oh, we're going to see a change of spawn points. Oh, okay, I remember what's happening. Yes, that makes sense. That does indeed make sense. There were some talks about um, people kind of abusing the, um, the points that spawned on. So it might just be that the Arbiter started the match and then restarted so that the points were, spawned, uh, were flipped around. And Verve this time only with two aircraft. Uh, this could be a different outcome. It could, it could, although can Arcade take this opportunity now? I mean, they, they have the strongest side, especially for A, they have the strongest side, but can they use it? Because remember, Arcade only have three tanks on the ground. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be a problem. And Ilya is in the Sherman Jumbo, which isn't particularly fast, so even going downhill towards Charlie, it's, it's gonna be a problem. And the other side, he's got Colas Rodas rushing in, and Destroy and Barter are quickly going for Brower. Mm, Arcade is not using their start to the advantage. If you see over to the A flag, they're not sending anything to the rich here. This is a rich that uh, that Verve Gaming always wins on by having the Tigri over here. Not sending but, any uh, tanks I mean, over again, here. Sorry, that. Look, Aver Aver was uh, was rolling into A point with Nosok. Nosok got taken out. Aver is now taking hit from the Tiger E, and lucky shot again, capturing Alpha. It looks like a repetition of of the first match we had on on Ash River, just in reverse, different sides, but that's it. With a big difference, though. With a big difference. Arcade did manage to get the air superiority, and they now have still all of the aircraft left. This is good. This is good. This is, this is exactly oh, what Arcade Oh, Moltcat. Moltcat. Great, great engagement there and getting calls for us out of Charlie. But again, still double cap going. But Orange, look at the team lists. Dwarf Gaming has lost four tanks, or at least two aircraft and two tanks. Arcade has only lost one tank. This is Arcade's good. This is much exactly how Arcade yeah. plays. They're off a better start here, but will those four planes come back in time? Put it that way. That's the thing, the air, the air is just very far away, which means if you... You, you have to hit your rockets, let's, let's put it that. Each rocket is, is even more available on this map than in any other map, just because the air is quite far away compared to stuff like Berlin. And look at Destroy now. Destroy is on top of the, uh, of the ridge line there. He's waiting for Ilya that's behind the, uh, the, the broken bridge support, and he can't progress. This is in a good position here because the way he's positioned, uh, yes, he's kind of exposing his lower glacies, but at the same time, if Ilya McLaren wants to advance, he'll have to, to present his hull. And like Destroy is, uh, is positioned, he, the, the angling that the, the natural angling that the uh, hull of the M4A3 has is pretty much negated. Uh, to make it worse, Carlos Rodas is back in the spawn point, shooting him at the side. Mm, Basically, Ilya really can't effectively bounce both, both shells. He's bouncing the shells, but he's taking fire from both, and... Oh, Ilya, Mac, what are you doing, mate? Don't present your side to destroy. That's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, if he pushes too much far out, you know, you're gonna get his driver killed. Now, Bartot over here is holding the bridge. It seems like he's also get, uh, holding an eye out for any strugglers of Arcade that might spawn in and uh, rush for the B-cap here. I mean, in these type of competitions we've seen so far, uh, 
these these tank tankers and pilots have to have their eyes on, on, on all fronts basically you have to expect uh, for an enemy to roll around any corner and it, 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 it must be it must be extremely challenging to ensure you're not getting hit from all directions Narket is playing very smart here they are oh 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 okay it seems like um the aircraft that landed on the airfield for arcade have changed their loadout they are now going for full rocket loadouts this is exactly what they need which means that is potentially four kills and if they can deliver yeah if they can t uh, if they can get the players that data really want so if they can get uh, the mugen Coles, rockless sniper and moonlight that's four players less for tvg that might be exactly what they need but in the meantime they have to do something the problem is they again they don't have any spawn points that's what might just lose them the match they need it's to slow fun. down the tickle bleed it is down to this run. If the aircraft do not manage to take out those four, uh, four players in this run, I don't think our kid is going to win this one either. I mean, they are to a very good start. At least they still have a chance. They still have a chance to win this one. Five minutes into the, into the game, they still have a chance. But they have to execute it perfectly. If any of those rockets miss, that might be the death sentence for Arcade. Yeah. And here they come. The first one in line is futile. Oh, not good. Not good news for Arcade. TVG has just spawned in an Ostwind. Now, one Oswind against four, four aircraft still going to be a tough battle, but at the same time, an Oswind can take out your entire enemy air, your entire air force if you do not pay attention. Yeah, Futo going for destroy. Interesting choice there. He's there suiciding. Misses the rockets. No, 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 no. That, not, not good. good. I mean, not good. If you're suiciding, you need to kill him. Ah, that's the thing. The way he was angled. Remember, these rockets are mounted on their wings in a certain distance. He may pretty much just uh, hits his rockets to either side of the tank. Yes, he yeah. took out the cannon barrel and the tracks. Red Dragon oh, goes no. for destroys one misses! What are you guys doing? Okay, oh don't my miss your chances God. like that. that this, is, this, this is over. Why did they do that? They had I don't McLaren. know. They had Illy McLaren. Illy McLaren would have had no chance to uh, no problem to, dist uh, to take out destroy. And yet they, they managed to waste two aircraft into one tank without getting, uh, without, without getting him killed. And to make it work, Darjet now used the rockets on the Oswin instead of strafing him with the guns. That was good though. That was still good. At least he I mean, it was, but it, uh, he's now suiciding into Bartle. That, that, I don't think how that helps him out. Red Dragon now respawning in the SM-79. They are risky. They are being very risky. Arcade is throwing away their aircraft here, throwing away their response in favor of getting more tanks and a bomber in the air. But look at the tickets, man. Look at the tickets. We are 6 minutes, 30, 30 seconds into the game, and Arcade has less than a quarter of their tickets left. They have to move now. They have to get both C and another cap to stop this ticket bleed to still have a chance winning against Arcade, against CVG. I mean, I, I understand the two points missed, but the fact that they went for destroy, I don't know, man. I feel like they could have gone for A, could have dislodged Sniper, you know, pushed there. They That could have assisted Bravo getting Bartot killed, and they could have completely neglected Charlie. And the thing is, they didn't need to, ch to, to, to send two. I mean, okay, one, okay, he missed his rockets. But still, at least he mobilized the, uh, the tank and uh, took out his gun barrel, which means Ilya McLaren could have easily, easily advanced and destroy him. There was no need to get to, to, to waste another aircraft into the same tank. Yep, and that, that second aircraft might as well have just been wasted on, on you know, in the Mugen when he was back in the Oswind. That would have would have salvaged another plane that got then shot down. I think it's over, Orange. I think it's over. Yeah, that, it's over. That just tactical error. Win this one. Just a major, major tactical flaw. Oh, actually, Maltcat still managed to get into the cap zone, which means at least the ticket bleed is stopped. But at the same time. They wasted too many aircraft. The way they well, here's the problem. Look, look, Ilya's dogfighting call was short as back on uh, Charlie, and now Destroy's rolling in to, to take Charlie out. Which means that the complete is on yet again. TVG doesn't even have to cap this one. Oh, Red Dragon not had his rudder sniped by Bartod. That's going to make it very hard to get those bombs on target, and by all means, nope, that one's not going to hit miles away. 402 tickets over. remaining for Arcade. It is over. Arcade, just a massive, massive technical flaw there. I don't know what exactly was going on there, but that cost them this game. It just cost them this game. Not looking too good. Ticket bleed is... There's no ticket bleed at the moment. They did manage to... Well, TVG... They did manage to get the A flag, and uh, TVG hasn't gotten the C flag just yet, but... At the same time... Oh, actually, hold on, hold on. Uh, sorry, let me eat my I own think, words. I think they might... 
I mean, there, there's a chance. I'm not going to call it. There is a chance. Because Verve is down three players. That is interesting. That is you think, Arcade like, can't, can't die anymore. That's the thing. They can't start losing players. That's going to drop the tickets. And they can't let Destroy take this game. Il McLaren has to take out Destroy now. Now. Yep. Come on. It's, come on. It's come this. on. Nope. 302 tickets. Uh, it's, it's over. Too late. It's now too late. it's over. It's too late. It's they too had a split late. second option, but Destroy was, was there too fast. Ah, Ilya, 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 you should have events there. Takes them out, <laughs> but it's too late. The tickets are down. The Verve Gaming in the lead. 3 2 1 against Arcade. This must be a massive, massive blow to the morale. Yeah. Not looking good whatsoever. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you guys tell us what did you think of this match? Do you think Arcade could have pulled this off if they didn't uh, send two aircraft into the same tank? This uh, was hard to watch. Not, not a lot of support going in for Arcade, surprisingly enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess they're a, good, they're a very good team. They're, they're lacking, they're lacking teamwork, though. Well, don't, don't forget, Arcade is the only properly sponsored team in uh, in War Thunder. They are Arcade is an is a multi-platform, multi-game team. They are, they have a team representing different games all across the esports scene. Uh, so they are the only proper professional team per se. But at the same time, yeah, for being uh, the only professional team, they don't really have the what you need to win fun league because remember i always said this it's not just about having good players it's not just about having a good team it's not just about having good tactics you have to have all of that you have to have good players good aircraft players good tank players you have to have good communication good chemistry good map awareness you have to know the tactics of the map on both sides basically you have to learn both maps twice and you have to have uh, good directions as well because one minute even 10 seconds Things that happen in in 10 seconds can completely turn around the game. And if you can't perceive that, you're not going to win this one. And Arcade is now, the most certain. They, they have very yeah. good players, but they just don't have the tactics to adapt. I mean, right now, if this was a normal match, this would be over. Verve would have progressed into the finals, and it's the end of the story. But it's the semifinals, and we're seeing the best of seven. So if Arcade, by some miracle, because the way they've been playing the last two matches hasn't been quite convincing can win three matches in a row, they could still win. But they need to start picking the right maps, using the right tactics. And even though they win the next match, Verve is going to pick Ash River. And it doesn't seem like anybody so far has managed to find out how to defeat that. And the way it's looking right now, Dislike is looking at facing against Verve tomorrow in the Grand Finals. So they, they better be practicing Ash River day and night because they're going to need it. Indeed. At the same time, though, Verve will have to practice, uh, to practice some jungle as well. Oh, they're going to have to practice a lot of jungle. This one, we've definitely seen, so far, we've seen um, teams perform better on some maps better than others. DVG just absolutely crushes in, uh, in, in Ash River. They have, the, without doubt, the best team in Ash River, which is one of the older maps as well. It's not exactly the oldest map, it's not, it's not the Karelia, but still. It's been in Speaking the game of for Corellia, a while. where where is it? We haven't seen it in a while, and it, the, it's still the, the same problem. The bug. There's a yeah. there's a bug with Corellia that doesn't allow uh, bombers to spawn in the air, which means they have to spawn from the airfield. And uh, in a matter of fairness, the um, uh, the arbiters ruled that both teams have to agree to play in Corellia for that to happen. And we see sometimes in the in the custom lobby, as you guys can see, we see sometimes teams. Um, Choosing Karelia, but since the other team doesn't want to play on that map, it gets rejected, and they have to. And it's usually a tactical map. choice. It's not that they actually don't want to play. It's it's just you know, oh, you do well on that map. Well, you're not going to get to play it. Yeah, you got to think it like that. Hmm. Oh, so you want to play on this map? Oh, well, nope. <laughs> yeah, nope. Try again. All right. So it seems like no change of tactics. Arcade again with uh, three tanks, four aircraft. Interestingly though, only one with rockets. Fetal is the only before 96 with rockets. All the rest seems to be going with rocket pods. Uh, TVG with two before 96s with rocket pods and one LA-7 without bombs, which means they are more than capable of fighting in the air. Especially the LA-7 can prove some trouble against all those uh, before 96s. The LA-7 to needs to go down first. Hmm, now we Ooh, are least flanking though. actually. Again, TVG is not flanking. Interesting choice, but well, arcade is, but it's going to take um, 
the socket in the sour cream some time to get to the other side. But at the same time, this is what lost them the match last time. Oh no! Not, not arcade, by much. Arcade, arcade, no, no. I can see a major technical flaw already. On the ground, they had. Oh. Ooh, that's a massive hole in your. Mate, you got a wing in your right hole. Uh, what did Average just do? Average drove through A point, nearly captured it, then drove out to, to evade shots from the lucky shot. Seems like he's trying to avoid the artillery there. I mean, yeah, but he just basically wasted 30 seconds instead of charging towards Charlie to help Ilya he's out. For a, he's not going for A, yes. And here's the major technical thought I was talking about. Eastern, Eastern Europe, especially on the side that Arcade spawned on, he can hold down C with only two tanks. Get one in the cap zone and one in the house behind uh, where the destroyers are at the moment. If yeah. you manage to do that, you can hold the C flag only with two tanks against an entire uh, enemy team, but Arcade waited that opportunity, that, oppor that opportunity. They didn't rush into C, they let the Rev Gaming capture the C flag, and now it's going to be extremely, extremely hard for them to take that back. And at the same time, they also lost their Air Force. Yeah, Red Dragon is now dogfighting Sniper, but this is an LA7 versus a BF-49 G6 with gun ports. I know Red Dragon's a good pilot, but he's going to need more than just that to counter the LA7's maneuvers. Honestly, Orange, I think this is it. I think this is it. Remember, three minutes into the game and Arcade did not manage to pull out the advantage. They're not going to win by capping. They are never going to win by capping, especially, especially by how they just didn't even try to go for the capture zone. There's just, the just such a massive, massive flaw in tactics. They need at least... Oh, Red Dragon gets killed by Colin Thrower, at least heavily damaged. Yep, his elevators are out. That's and the Air Force that's the gone. aircraft for Arcade. Arcade all out of aircraft, down to tanks. Not looking good. But hey, well, Arcade might be sad, but you guys at home should not be. Because Zerba Claus is back in town. We have another round of giveaways coming in at the bottom of the screen. Now, this is probably the last giveaway of uh, today, actually, since... Yeah, this is possibly the last match, so not much point in telling you how to win, but I'm going to tell you anyways because we are going to have one last game tomorrow in the Grand Final. So if you want to win in the giveaways, all you have to do is go to warfun.pro, log in and be on the streams tab. You can pause the stream and go back to Twitch. It's a o Okay, now what you can win is one of the following. If you don't have a if, if you don't have a dog tag, you can win silver line boosters, research points, uh, prima count days, golden eagles, M24 chef in a P3 on a Mustang. If you do have a dog tag, you can also win RBT5, uh, team logo decals, and it seems like you can also win some um, some skins, some skins for tanks that you haven't unlocked yet from the uh, Final League achievements, which are running until the 15th of February, by the way. So all dog tag owners, if you want to get those skins, if you want to unlock the M24 chef and TP3 on a Mustang, you have until the 15th of February to do that. And speaking of uh, of achievements, I feel like Arcade's about to unlock a new one, which is wrong, wrong decisions. They're just piled up in the street there. There's no tactic, no coordination. It's only now that, that Alpha's been actually captured. And again, it's Nosok. If anyone, he's the one that will be carrying the team for Arcade. He did in the first game. Nosok got a five kill game in the last one, which carried his team. Can he pull it off again, though? That's that's a question here, because the Verve Gaming is going to have an eye out on him. Uh, the thing about Verve is, yeah, they only now spawned in the seven player that was uh, eliminated. Our sniper that landed on the airfield in the I-7 and is now going to assist his team in the T-44. Good decision, since the, the bombs on the LA-7 are two 100 kilos, and unless the target is immobilized or you have some type of godlike aim, I don't think you'll have be, be having any luck with those bombs. Not really good. Now Arcade is finally mounting the counter offensive here. They are sending most of their tank forces onto the C flag, which is just putting a a band-aid over a gashing wound. You need more than a band-aid to fix those bullet holes. <laughs> yep. I mean, we, we've seen them in the first match in Eastern Europe. Arcade did manage to get back with a counter-attack. And it was a similar one, on, well, fading off on the other side, but <laughs> is it going to work? Tim, I know one viewer who, who will be very, very, very happy right now. Do you remember a name by um, Uf Matar? A guy in the chat that always complains about arcades. I, I, yeah. He must be very happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, he must be, he must be, he must be just very, very happy and slowly getting happier as, as these matches are progressing. 
Ooh, William McLaren trying to advance here, but he's taking some artillery fire and some AA fire as well. Now, once the AA can't really penetrate him from the front, uh, they can create some smoke which is going to blind William McLaren's uh, gun sight and make it hard for him to... Ooh, hard for him to get shots in as his tracks just get blown out. He's now in a bad position here. I mean, at least one thing Arcade okay, has going for them finally is one cap circle. So at least the tickets are running out, but running out at a reasonable pace. TVG, look at this presence of TVG. Look at this presence. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful how they position themselves. It's impenetrable. This is like a, a Berlin Wall 2.0, just this time not in Berlin, but on news in Europe. Just a yep. wall of Soviet and, uh, and German steel. You can't I, get through this. Actually, something I missed uh, is, is Nosok. He got taken out by the sniper. So there's now no one flanking. That, that just basically put the odds of Arcade being able to mount an effective counter-offensive to little to none. Pretty much what we're saying is, it's more likely for you to get um, to win uh, in the lottery than for Arcade to win this map right now. Yep. They just, they just lost all of their aces in the sleep. And th th that's the thing, Arcade works entirely on one-trick ponies, let's say. And if you deny them those, those advantages, they, they just don't know how to come back. And to compare the teams right now, we've got, you know, Verve entirely in, in T-44s with the exception of Demugan and Tiger E. And meanwhile, all heavy tanks with the exception of, of Nosok. I mean, the Tiger E is a good tank, but in a close quarter engagement where it has to, you know, you know, slowly look around the house and try not to get hit, uh, it's not going to work that well. Ilya now getting tag team. His transmission has been blown away. He's now th down three crew members. One more hit, and he's going to be out. Yep, there he goes. Ah, destroy. he's down. He's off. down. That's actually still not out. Interestingly, Arcade didn't lose a single uh, single player just yet. The entire team did uh, did die once, so every single death uh, from now on out is one player out for Arcade. But at the same time, no, no, never mind. Everett just got taken out. It's now six versus six. Although, TVG, look at, look at the team, let's... TVG is just dominating this completely. Not only do they have the capture points, they have the point advantage. They also barely lost any tanks. They lost Colos yep. Rodos and uh, Demugan died once. Every single other player, five other players, are still on their first tank. This is Oh, amazing. Sniper just took out Moldcat. He can now actually start flanking Dark Jet and Futile, which means that Nosok is going to be the one defending. Look at Nosok, he's all the way back next to the river uh, in the spawn point. He's doing some, something well though, at least he's uh, denying Sniper one, a sniper to um, flank around and uh, get the free Tigris from behind, from the sides. At the same time though, that's even even one less player for, uh, for Arcadia. They are already running out. They're already down three players, only have four players left. Those three, yeah, those Tigers, well, one more Tiger just died, so only two Tigers. Ely McLaren and Team 25. Uh, uh, scratch that, one left, one, one left. Future has got taken three out Three players left. <laughs> yep, this, this is over, Arcade. Just oh, this is painful to cooking. watch, man. This is absolutely painful to watch. Or if you hate Arcade, maybe uh, it's now time to open the champagne and, and uh, make a party. Because now, yep, it is time. It is time. TVG is rushing in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to War Thunder Zerg Rush Tactics. This is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. This is basically just Verve taking Arcade's favorite tactic and just smothering it all over them. They took Arcade, put him in a bucket, and started scrubbing the floor with him. This is exactly what they did. Arcade had no chance. Okay, given they had a good game in the first map, but... <laughs> Not so can now the last one standing. Not looking at for whatsoever. No, nope. it looks like TVG is even like... starting to kill their own teammates now. <laughs> 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 Running out of, of enemies to kill, they are starting to to commit fratricide. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, at this point, even if Verve had only one player, that would still would have won because the tickets aren't going to run out. Yeah, the only realistically the only thing you also can do right now is, is try to stay alive, but or go for a swim. Or go for a swim. We've seen this before. Uh, I mean, maybe clean your tank and nope. He gets Amorex. Ladies and gentlemen, Verf Gaming has just won in a massive display of power against Arcade. These were the last semifinals. As Lucky Shot just gets stuck in the ditch there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, this is it. This is it. 
Arcade takes third place. Verve Gaming moves up into the finals and is facing off against the Giants. Dislike tomorrow in the grand finale. One of those teams is going to take the championship of the first season of Wonder League home. My God, I I'm excited. I am honestly excited. From the way Dislike played against Arcade, and from the way Verve played against Arcade, it's gonna be it's gonna be an extremely challenging match for both of these teams. Indeed, tomorrow is going to be the battle of titans. No yep. mercy. Whoever wins this one deserves every single hard-fought win. Either Verve or or Dislike, both very very good teams with completely different playstyles. That's the thing I I, I love. For example, no, I get kind of bored when I watch uh, things like uh, Fink versus Arcade or versus Verve because they have kind of, uh, well, not so much Arcade, but, but for example, Fink versus Verve because they have kind of similar playstyles. Verve and Dislike are completely different teams, completely different, and complete, and both uh, very, very strong at the same time. Yeah, with similar teams, games tend to extend for a long period of time, and it, it can get progressively boring. You know, between those fifth matches, teams are tired. Us as the commentators are tired. We were seeing the same tactics, same mistakes being repeated, but I think uh, this like versus Verve is going to be something else. It, it, it's a derby. It's like it's like watching Real Madrid face against Barcelona. It's the one match you have to see. No, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like Zerva Klaus uh, reached deep into his pockets and is giving away one last giveaway for <laughs> the final of the semi-final. So. Congratulations to all of the winners. If you see your name on the bottom of the screen, check your in-game account, relock the game if you're already logged in, and uh, you might have just won yourself an RVT5 if you do have a dog tag. So, well, depending on who you'd bet. I mean, if you bet against uh, Arcade, uh, if you bet for Arcade, well, it is the only chance to get the RVT5, the RVT5 now. But if you bet uh, for uh, Dislike or Verve, this might just be the one-day early access for you. Who knows? Now, Orange, um, I have information that you're not going to be around with us tomorrow. So this was actually your last stream for season one of uh, Final League. So I actually want to to ask you something special. Uh, how, how was your experience so far? Did you how, how did you enjoy commentating of of these matches? Did you learn anything? Did you root for any team? Just how was it for you? Yeah, so it, this goes back, you know, we did Thunder, Thunder Cup and it was, it was an interesting experience and then Thunder League got announced and, you know, obviously big eyes and expectations from everybody and we went way over that. We went, we, we blew away all the expectations, both the prize pool, the people, the community that's been watching, uh, the games we've been seeing, fantastic teams, fantastic uh, teamwork matches. I'm in a way speechless and extremely thankful to be sitting here able to, uh, to commentate alongside Mike and Sean. It's been a great experience, and I cannot wait for Season 2 to start. Indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't yet, do check out uh, the Orange Doom on YouTube. He is an amazing guy, and I truly, truly suggest you to watch his videos. He's very, very helpful if you don't know how to play this game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow then is going to be Dislike versus Verve, commented by myself and... Sean, this is going to be the grand finale, so do stay tuned for that. You absolutely do not want to miss this battle. It's going to be the battle of titans. Just absolute epicness. And of course, more giveaways if you don't have the RBT5 just yet. Now, we are going to say goodbye. We are going to see you tomorrow at uh, 20 CET, which is 7 p.m. GMT. And uh, we will all hopefully see you there tomorrow. So, thank you for watching Thunder League and stay tuned. The underdog is crushing the top dog. It's just amazing what these guys can pull off. Please run for red tank. Go and she takes him out. What a game. What a game. My God. They're attacking. They're every single vehicle of dislike is moving up. They're assaulting them. Welcome back to Thunder League.